Hello friends, this lecture will be the continuation of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture what we have done basically is that if this was the cross section of the column and the two principal axes were suppose this was my yy axis and suppose this was my zz axis then essentially what we did was we found out the positions for which we should apply the point load P such that there won't be any tensile stresses induced in the cross section right and we assume that this P would be applied through either this axis or through this axis and effectively if this was H then this P should have been applied if this is of eccentricity E then E was less than H by 6 and was greater than minus H by 6 so within this area wherein this is equal to h by 6 and this is also equal to h by 6 we applied p so that there won't be any uh, tensile stresses at the cross section now in this lecture we will not apply any load p in the principal axis right rather we would find apply a load p at this point and try to find out within which region we should keep this p so that there won't be any tensile stresses across this cross section so let us see whether let us see whether we can do it now for example I have this as my cross section right and this suppose is my y axis y y axis and this suppose is my z z axis now I have a point P right and I put a load at this point right now essentially the distance of y y axis from this is m suppose and this is suppose n so what will be the stress induced at any general point this is suppose sigma sigma is equal to p by a plus p into m will give me the bending moment about the y y axis right p into m will sorry p into m will give me the bending moment about the z z axis right so p into m will give me the bending moment about the z z axis into z and the cross section is y y so essentially this will be i y y why i wrote this because it's like this as we have seen in the beam theory right for example this is my cross section y y and i apply a force p here so this force into this eccentricity will create some sort of a couple in this direction and essentially the beam will bend about this axis so what I got to do is P into M I, I find out the bending about this axis right the next thing what I am going to do is into Z which will give me this direction the stresses about this direction right divided by this and this is effectively I by Y so plus P into M P into N will be bending about the ZZ axis, right? P into N bending about ZZ axis into this, that is the about distance about the Y axis, that is effectively Y by IZZ, right? So if you take P by A common from here, I will have 1 plus MZ by uh, this, suppose, is IYY, this is RA, RY whole square. And this is suppose a r z whole square, right? So one by one plus m z by r y whole square plus n y by r z whole square, right? Now, now the sigma would be tensile if effectively this is negative, and the sigma will be compressive if effectively this is positive. Now we take this direction as the positive y direction and this direction as the positive z direction, right? So essentially what we do is we put this that is 1 plus mz by ry square plus ny by rz square to be equal to 0. And effectively this is the equation of a line of a straight line wherein this is equal to y by rz square by n plus z by ry square by m is equal to minus 1. This minus 1 indicates that this would be in this coordinate that is yz plane and essentially this u and v will be u will be equal to rz square by n right 
So u is taken about the y-axis. So this is suppose u and this is suppose v. And what is u? u is equal to rz squared by n and v is equal to ry squared by n. So effectively, I have a straight line like this. But in this is v and this is suppose u. Right. And on the top side of the, this straight line, what I have is that I will have this to be less than 0. So essentially, this will be tensile. And this bottom unshaded portion will have compressive forces. Right. Now, in this exercise, the next thing we are going to, what we are going to do is, we are going to see whether we can eliminate this shaded portion out. And effectively, if this straight line would pass through this point, and if this point was O, then there won't be any tensile stresses across this cross section. Right. Okay. So effectively, the next thing is, we got to eliminate the tensile stress and put P in some region. Right. How can we do that? Now, for example, I take this equation. Right. And then, if this straight line is to pass through this point, then effectively, I have Z, that is this, to be equal to, if this is B, and if suppose this is H, right, then Z will be equal to B by